Are you the same Jonathan Lopez who was placed on deferred adjudication in 2014 CR 7889A for the offense of robbery on February 2nd, 2015 for a term of 10 years? Is that you? Yes, Your Honor. All right, State. Violated condition number five in Bear County, Texas. The defendant, Jonathan Ovidio Lopez, was in and there, failed to report to the supervision officer as directed for the months of January and December 2022 in violation of condition number five. How do you plead to that? True or not true? True, Your Honor. Oh, Your Honor, state waives all the violations. Any objection? No objection, Your Honor. Did you understand by pleading true to violation of condition number five, the court could find it true, grant the motion, find you guilty, and sentence you up to 10 years in prison and up to 10,000, I'm sorry, up to 20 years in prison and up to $10,000 fine? Yes, Your Honor. Knowing that, do you still wish to plead true to violation of condition number five? Yes, Your Honor. Court will find violation of condition number five. Is there a proposed agreement? Uh, Your Honor, it's uh, both sides want to go open. All right. State, what are you requesting? Uh, Your Honor, state requesting revocation in eight years TBC. All right. Defense, what are you requesting? Judge, uh, we have a witness here as well. If, if you feel that you need her. Oh, uh, let's call the witness. Okay. Mm -hmm. I call Alondra Mata. And uh, how do you know Mr. Lopez? He's my boyfriend. And how long have you been together? A year and a half. Okay. And in that year and a half, uh, where has he lived? with uh, me and during that time was he working yes he's right. been working all right and did he go to work every day yes all right has he been uh helping with bills and all your living expenses as well yes he makes my car payment pays half of the rent and uh buys the food and um during that time has he did you were you aware that he was supposed to be reporting to probation no, I wasn't aware of the beginning. All right. And so now you're aware that he had that requirement. You understand that we're here today because uh, the state has filed a motion to revoke his deferred. Yes. All right. And you understand that means that at this point, uh, he's not convicted felon. Yet. Correct. So we're here today to uh, ask the judge if she would consider allowing him to stay on deferred. So can you tell the judge a little bit about um, your experiences with him, with the responsibility, and how he's been doing since he's been with you. Um, yes. Um, Jonathan has been with me for a year and a half. Um, when I met him, he was already working. Um, we moved in together, and he's been helping me pay the bills. Um, he, from what I've been with him this time, he's been doing good. He hasn't done anything um, that shows you know that he's going back to what he used to be the person that i met is not what i know today that was something in his past so i if the judge were to allow him to have another opportunity not to go to prison um why do you think that that he would follow the rules at this point I think he's in a better place now, and I've never been in trouble, so I don't allow anything bad to, you know, for him to do. So therefore, I know for sure that if he's with me, he's not going to be doing anything wrong. And um, you understand that he had used marijuana, and we waived those violations, but um, how do you feel about that? He's not smoking, and he's not going to. Okay. If he was, would you report him? Yes, he knows that. Would you be there to help him to keep track of all the things that he needs to do? Yes, I've been helping him with that as well. He's been checking in and on his own doing what he has to do. So he's been doing pretty good. Okay. I'll pass the ones. I just have a few questions. Uh, it looks like it was a shock whenever you found out he was on probation. Then. Um, not as a shock, but when i found out i did tell him like you have to do the right thing now and this is what he's been doing since he's um been with me so um as far as when he got arrested he's been following all the rules and i hope you know that's what he's going to continue to do if he's with me so it wasn't a shock when you found out that he had been placed on probation for robbery previously 
I didn't know that until now. So you never once informed you that? No, not until I found out. So you, you found that out when he was arrested on this, this charge? Yes. And um, based on what you knew of him, was it a surprise that he would have had a case like that? It is because he's a good man. He really is. So when I found out what it was, I was, I, I didn't believe it, but he's with me and he's been doing good. So I think that's the person that he's trying to be from now on. No more questions, Your Honor. I have a few questions. When did you meet him? Uh, January of 2023. Where did you meet him? I met him on social media. All right. And when you met him, when did he tell you he was on probation? Did he ever tell you? Um, no, he didn't tell me that he was on probation. I He was working. So we just, you know, continue like. Well, no, how did you find out he was on probation? Not too long ago. When he got arrested? Yes. All right. And then that's when he told you he was on probation? Yes. All right. Do you have any children? Yes. What are their ages? Uh, 17 and 21. All right. And then you said that he pays the bills? Yes. All right. Do you pay any of the bills? Yes, I do. I have a job. All right. And this marijuana use, did you know he was using marijuana? Um, no. Oh. In the beginning, I knew, but he stopped. Okay. All right. Thank you so much. You're Thank you. Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, Judge, I would like to call Mr. Lopez. All right. Can you raise your right hand? Do you solemnly swear or affirm the testimony you give will be the truth and nothing but the truth? So help you, God? Yes, Your Honor. All right. You can lower your hand. State your name for the record. Jonathan Avidio Lopez. All right. Defense. Thank you, Judge. Jonathan, you you know this. We're here in front of the judge, and this is your third NTR, correct? Yes, Your Honor. All right. So you've had problems while you've been on probation when you started. Is that correct? Yes, Your Honor. Can you talk to us about what was the, the underlying cause of those? Um, I just, I was in a, a, at the time I was in a very dark place and I had lost my, my jobs and went through a major breakup with the mother of my children. And I just felt like everything was, uh, you know, everything was just uh, on top of me and I, I was in a dark place and I was using marijuana as a as a dumb decision instead of uh, reaching out for help and getting help from from the state and myself. I put myself in a bigger holes than I was already in. And and you you went to outpatient treatment, right? <clears throat> and you completed that successfully once, and you went a second time, and um, you did not complete that second time. Yes, so wh what happened there? I just was, um, I was out of work and stuff, and I was um, embarrassed of, like, asking for help, and I just didn't, my phone had broke, and I didn't continue with the Zoom. So at some point, um, you started climbing out of your depression. What, what, what was the, the catalyst to that? What changed in your life? I started uh, going back to church, and... Seeing my kids was, uh, it gave me hope again to, to do everything that I needed to do and get back on track. And on your prior NTRs, you had turned yourself in. And uh, on this this NTR, you knew you had a warrant. At some point, you you went to turn yourself in. Is that correct? Yes, ma'am. All right. And so you went to the sheriff's office? Yes, ma'am. And you identified yourself and they told you to wait? Yes, ma'am. So you waited there for some time? Yes, ma'am. Okay. And then um, you made a decision to leave. You got scared. Well, why, why did you leave? Uh, I was there for about an hour. Everybody called me, and uh, I made a, a, a stupid decision just to leave instead of waiting for them to come get me. And I, I, um, I made a dumb decision, and I left, and... Here I am. 
back and back and forth. So uh, you you began working uh, once you started seeing your kids and you started pulling yourself out of the depression. You started working again. Where did you work? With my uncle doing roofing. Okay. Um, after you were arrested, um, he uh, he didn't want you to come back to work for him. Can you explain why that was? He was dealing with his own problems with uh, probation and other stuff, and he just didn't want um, me to affect with whatever he had going on. And did that have something to do with your ankle monitor? Um, a little bit, because where he goes, we go to like certain places, and he didn't want to, for me to be on a monitor and go to like certain places that he needs to go, like his bases and different stuff okay. for them to, to uh, decline his contracts and stuff. Okay. And so at some point you, um, you met Alondra? Yes, ma'am. And um, how did that change your life? Um, she's a good person and I just, we started going to church and I feel like she, she pushed me to be a better person than, than I was and she motivates me to to be a better person. You know, this is your third MTR, correct? Yes, ma'am. Why should the judge give you another chance after she's already given you two chances? What What's different now that you can assure her that if she does give you this chance, that you're not going to give her another reason to put you in prison, that you can be an upstanding uh, citizen and continue working and being a good force in the community? Uh, uh, before all this that, uh, that I'm going through is I was young. The case is over about 10 years old. And after that, I haven't picked up any new cases and I haven't gotten like major trouble since then. And I, uh, I know I made uh, stupid uh, decisions along the way when I was forwarding, doing the UAs and stuff. But I was using marijuana as, um, can I say, like, coping mechanism when instead of I should have asked for help and asked the, my probation officer um, for different ways. And I was just, I made dumb choices instead of um, but you have doing help. the right thing and going to. So you had help, but you blew that, right? You'd have the outpatient and, and you messed that up. Was that, what was your mental condition at that point? I was just uh, in a dark place. I wasn't thinking correctly. And you have picked up a couple of a possession of marijuana, a shoplifting, and a driving while license invalid at some point during your probation, correct? Yes, but that was uh, over seven years ago. Okay. And and so are you are you using marijuana now? No, you're no ma'am. If you were to test, would you test clean? Yes, you understand the judge could send you for testing if she wants. Yes, ma'am. Uh, pass the witness. State. Just a few questions, sir. So you never told the laundry about the fact that you were on probation, did you? I told her that I was in trouble, but she she really didn't believe me until I recently got incarcerated. Did you ever explain exactly what you meant by being in trouble? Uh I kind of like ex explained it to her, but she just didn't believe because she didn't see that person. And I explained to her and I would explain to her and I told her that I need to make enough money to get a lawyer because um, I'm in, you know, major trouble. And she just, she didn't believe it. And when, when all this happened, when I recently got incarcerated and I guess she, she saw for herself, she, um, when I came home, she, she, you know, she still, she still don't believe that. But I told her it was something that I, you know, it's over ten years ago. I believe everybody has a, a second chance or deserves a second chance. You would agree that you've already had two prior NTRs, right? Yes, sir. So would that have been your first and second chance? Yes, sir. No more questions. Please sit. All right. Anything else? Nothing, Judge. Any other witnesses? No. Not. All right. The court is going to find you guilty. Uh, grant the motion. You all want to speak to time? Your Honor, state's still going to write the papers. Defense. Judge, um, if... Yeah. 
may I address the court about the issue? I, I, I understand that we can throw him in prison. All right, so counsel, I, I will hear your, your issue, but here's the thing. I know that I'm not the person who placed him on probation because he was placed on probation in 2015. But since that time, you've had motions to revoke with me. And I know that I tell everybody, if there is an issue, let your probation officer know. If you feel like they're not addressing it, you can always come back to court. He's just been, he's just disappeared. And I'm sure everybody has read the court summary. He's disappeared. And I internalized everything that was said to me. And you know what usually happens, Mr. Lopez? People will call witnesses to come in. And you know what? It's always the witness acting as though they're on probation. I'm going to make sure this person doesn't use marijuana. I'm going to make sure this person reports for probation. They're not on probation. You are. All you had to do was report. And guess what? If you're testing for, uh, positive for marijuana, it is rare that I revoke somebody for testing positive for marijuana. I let them know. I know marijuana is legal in other states. If you want to make it legal in Texas, contact your legislature. But while you're on probation here, you're not allowed to use marijuana. And I know the last time we were here, you know, on your motion to revoke, where you were continued, I said those exact thing, things to you. And now when everything comes to a head where somebody has a motion to revoke and they wouldn't report it, all of a sudden, everybody has their life together. I'm married. I'm engaged. I'm with a lady. I never told her I was on probation because you know what ends up happening? Guys, when they end up with women, sometimes women will fall in love with you. Maybe they're falling in love with your publicist. Maybe you haven't presented your full self. But I know usually when women fall in love with the guy and they don't know all of this history, then they get hit with the history. And guess what? They still in love with that guy, just like the witness who came to testify for you. She's still in love with you. She still wants to do everything to keep you out and about, but you're not a good candidate for probation. I don't consider it throwing you away. You can still do good things when you come out of prison. I'm not going to sentence you to eight years in prison because you have done some things on probation, but I'm not continuing you on probation. So you're going to be found guilty. I'm going to revoke you. I'm going to give you credit for any time served. I'm going to suggest the therapeutic community. There's going to be no contact with Maria Ahmed and James Tristan. I'm going to order the removal of GPS because you're going to be in custody. They've asked for eight. I'm not sentencing him to eight years. I'm not going to sentence him to the minimum. So what are you asking for? Uh, Judge, I would ask for three to four. He, he uh, did make an effort. He has turned himself in the past. So he's not somebody who keeps absconding and not, and not putting himself forward. Judge, he has followed all the rules. He could have run. He didn't run when I went and talked with him this morning. Um, I did. We talked seriously about the fact that this may very well happen. And he didn't run, Judge. He didn't leave. I've had clients to just run out the door. He didn't do that. He still stood here to face. So although he made some bad decisions and he didn't handle things well, I think he has he has improved his life. And I understand that you may not believe that. But I've talked a lot with uh, Alondra. Oh, no, I, be I believe he's improved his life. Very very stable. And so he has, I think that has to, he hasn't been living under a bridge or using uh, hard drugs or living off of other people and he's been working. So I would ask, um, given that, that, that you give him three to four years, judge. All right. I'll sentence you to four years in the prison. We, uh, did you review the document entitled trial court certification of defendants rights to appeal with your attorney? Did you understand it? Yes, John. Because this is a plea bargain agreement because I thought, I'm sorry, you have a limited right to appeal. And that right to appeal is as it relates to the allegations in the motion, not the fact that you are in deferred adjudication. Because this is a felony conviction, you're not allowed to own or possess any weapons or ammunition. If you have a question over what a weapon or ammunition is, you'll need to speak to an attorney. Do you understand? Yes, Your Honor. All right, we can go off the record. I hope you understand the reason why you were, you're being sent to prison is because your actions. It's not because of the person you were with. At some point in time, we cannot just go off and live our lives and depend and pretend like we're not on probation. And when you tell me I haven't picked up any new charges, there are a whole host of people in this courtroom who haven't picked up any new charges. When you tell me, oh, I've stopped using drugs, there's a whole host of people who are abiding by the rules and not using drugs. The fact that you're, you have not picked up any new charges 
yeah, that's something I'll consider, but it's not the be all, the end all, because you shouldn't be picking up new charges anyway. So when you're released from the prison, I realize prison time is a difficult time. Anytime you're locked up is a difficult time, but you need to stay on the straight and narrow. If she ends up waiting for you, then she'll end up waiting for you. Make sure you don't bring any problems to her doorstep. Don't go to prison and get institutionalized. When you come out, if you feel like you're going to use drugs or you need help finding a place that could help you with any drug issues or whatever issues you may have, if I'm still here, you can come back and I'll make sure that you get that help. You understand? Yes, sure. All right. Good luck to you.